First of all, David, I just wanted to say that um, it's been it's been really amazing for me to be here and um, to get to meet you and, and your family and just to learn uh, a bit about what you all do and um, Azure and, you know, it's something that's meant a lot uh, to myself and my wife um, who has had, a, you know, a lot of health issues due to, you know, um, uh, what they're putting in the foods. Sure. So, you know, this is, uh, this has been really amazing. So I, I was really fascinated, uh, to ask you about when and how did farming come into your family? How far back does it go generationally and kind of what's, what's the story, uh, behind getting here to where you are now? Well, as, as far as I know, uh, we've always been farmers. Um, my grandfather's family, um, they were living in Ukraine, but they had been invited there from, I guess they were on the Swiss-German border originally. Mm -hmm. and they had been invited there to teach the people how to farm by, I believe it was Catherine the Great of, in Russia. They invited strategically and they offered them land to come in and do that. So they came in, they were going to teach those people how to farm better, and they would get free land, mm -hmm. which she did do. Mm -hmm. Um, but then, you know, fast forward, uh, you know, a few years, um, we had a very different political climate in Russia. As you know, mm -hmm. that was a tragic time in history mm -hmm. about the turn of the century. And so my great grandfather, um, he, he told his two oldest sons, he said, I don't know that there's any future here at all. And um, can you, I want you boys to go to America. And the two boys were, my grandfather was 16 and his brother was 18 when they left. And this was before the revolution was uh, right before World War I? It or was right before World War I. Okay. Yes, they missed World War I just by like two years. Wow. Like so your great grandfather could really see what was, yeah. What he, was he saw, yeah, he foresaw. Yeah in his sphere of influence or however it worked there, apparently was a fairly influential man in the area. Oh, wow. And um, he foresaw problems coming on yeah. during that time frame. And so he sent the boys over. They ended up, uh, he knew somebody that knew somebody that had moved to Spokane, Washington. Mm. And so he told the boys, oh, go to Spokane and look up Gus. And so they did. Yes. Gus ended up being a wheat farmer in Spokane, and he ended up hiring the two boys to pick up wheat sacks. Right. 16, 18 years old, they journeyed to America. On a ship, you know, took them all winter long pretty much to get over, and then a train all the way across mm. from New York City, I guess, where they, you know, the ships came in. So I think of that from... In, you know, with my 16-year-old, I'm like, you know, that would be something. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it turns out he was right. Um, you know, the World War I came. It devastated that area. There was very little left of the area in which they lived. And then almost back-to-back -back with that was the communist... Um, I don't know, revolution, they called it, I guess. Mm -hmm. But the, the communism came in. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently, my great-grandfather was a little bit too outspoken against communism wow. in that time. And he ended up, well, actually, it was more the persecution of the church, mm. really, than communism per se. But communism wasn't real keen on Christianity at the time. No. And they ended up putting him on a train for Siberia. Wow. And uh, that's the last he was ever seen by the family, although there was a man that came back that did make it back from Siberia and said he escaped, and he tried to walk back and apparently froze somewhere on the wow. journey. So we don't know the yeah. knows for sure. Um, but It's a harrowing story. So, yeah. yeah. So granddad, um, so he ended up, he was like 18 years old. He, by the time World War One came around, mm -hmm. 
he got drafted into the army in the U.S. because he had immigrated legally. Yeah. And so, but because he spoke German and they thought maybe he was, could be a German sympathizer and only been here two years, they didn't send him over there. They put him on the docks in Seattle loading war munitions. And so apparently um, some officer fell off the, off the dock and he rescued them and he ended up hurting himself fairly bad doing that. Mm. Um, so he got honorably discharged, but as a bonus, he got his U.S. citizenship okay. because he had acted above and beyond the call of duty. And so after World War I, he went back to Ukraine mm. where they lived. Uh, as a U.S. citizen, which meant something then. That, that was yeah. a, a big badge of honor. And he ended up marrying my grandmother while he was over there. Mm -hmm. Her family had been devastated by World War I as well, not quite to the same extent. Mm -hmm. And he found one of his sisters still living. Wow. And he brought his sister, his, my grandmother, and several of her family members came as well. So he brought a whole group of them mm -hmm. Of wow. them back. That's incredible. So that was and, that, that and that tradition uh, of farming that was in the family in Ukraine, it just came with them. Yeah, well, he went straight to, you know, when he was picking up sacks, he uh, ended up making a lot more money than most farm laborers because uh, the combine broke down. Back then, it was a big deal to have a combine. Mm. And the combine actually came with a combine man that came, was trained in the factory. And so it, but wheat harvest is a big deal, and if it rains, it's over, and you lose your crop. And so the farmers are all really anxious to get their wheat off. Mm -hmm. And the combine man, he says, oh, the combines broke down. I don't know what to do. i got to take a train back to Chicago to get uh, figure out how to fix this combine. And so the wheat picker-uppers, uh, mm -hmm. the hacks, they caught up. They didn't have anything to do. Mm -hmm. So Granddad went over and asked the farmer if he could fix the combine. <laughs> so he did. Yeah. He fixed the combine. And so when the combine man came back, the farmer told him to get lost that he had a new combine. Man. So the combine man, they made like five times as much money as a yeah. standard yeah. laborer. So he was able to save enough money not only to go back and bring family members back, mm -hmm. but he also had saved up enough money to buy a small farm okay. not too far from there. So that was his first farm. Wow. Yeah. And then... Not too long after that, he got sick, mm. had heart disease. Mm. Just, it was bad. He was only late 40s, I think. Wow. He's like, no, um, he, the doctor told him, yeah, you don't even step on a tractor floorboard or you're going to have a heart attack. This is, you know, you got to take these pills all the time. And, yeah. you know, this is back in the 50s. Mm -hmm. He sold the farm, bought a different one that he could rent out because the one he was on was a lot of work. Mm -hmm. So, um and uh, moved to Vancouver, Washington. <laughs> um, these, and so dad actually graduated from high school in Vancouver, Washington. That's why. So they, but after that, dad decided, well, you know, it's in my blood. I, mm -hmm. I need to farm. I, you know, yeah. let me do it. Right. So granddad, he ended up, he sold that farm and he bought the farm where we're at now. A gotcha. good farm. Yeah. Um, that would have been in like 1954 that he, that he bought that place. So okay. it's been, our family's been farming that piece of ground since yeah. that time frame. So yeah, wow. farming is, uh, but the the cool thing and what really got us into alternative farming and health yeah. was that after my dad met my mom, her dad was kind of into health a little bit. He had goats and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So he told my granddad, said, you know, you should try some alternative stuff. It'd probably do good for your heart. He says, well, what should I do? He says, well, you know, don't eat so many fatty meats. Get lean meat only and don't eat meat every meal. Mm -hmm. And uh, eat lots of garlic. Garlic's really good for the heart. Mm -hmm. So he started, uh, he did that. He changed his meat eating. And he only ate like venison and beef and lean, leaner meats, mm -hmm. little lean chicken and stuff. And and he ate like five or six cloves of garlic a day. He just, you know, he was a tough old codger. He just yeah, ate yeah, yeah. baby with bread. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> About six months later, his heart condition was gone. Wow. And uh, so he started out farming again. So 
He was actually killed in his mid-70s in a tractor accident. And at that time, he was farming like 16 hours a day again. Problem. Wow. So yeah. that was the first uh, family step toward yeah. changing, you yeah. know, farming different. Right. Yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. 